Welcome to Chalmette High School. I'm Annalise Kassar Tedesco, Louisiana's State Teacher of the Year for 2022 and the host of the Arts Strong series. Thank you for joining us today where we will meet another guest artist with a passion for the next generation. Today's guest artist is my friend and colleague, Joy Mead. Please help me welcome her to the stage. Joy, we are so excited to have you with us today. Thanks for making time. It is my pleasure to be here. Oh, goodness, thank you. Well, you know, we have a lot of students um, in our program, and I think across the state, who have a background in theater, um, both with plays and in musical theater, and you have a bit of a background in theater too, and of course, you've taken that theater training and transitioned to the world of opera. Why don't you start by telling us your story how did you get involved with theater? How did you transition to opera? All that stuff. Sure. Well, um, I was drawn to theater from a very young age. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what it was that drew me. But I very distinctly remember my, my first audition as a young child, auditioning for a community theater production. I got up to sing something, and the room started closing in on me everything started getting dark and I got tunnel vision and I don't know what happened next. I didn't fall over on the floor. I did get through the audition. <laughs> I don't know what I sang and it was probably pretty awful because I don't have any recollection of actually doing the production. <laughs> so, but something in that moment clicked and I just kept wanting to pursue that and I, and I wanted to do a successful audition and I wanted to get into the show and I wanted to perform in the show um, <clears throat> and so it developed from there um, I, I was also very interested in music my mother was a pianist and an organist um, and so there was a lot of music in the house 
um, she accompanied me a lot and we belted out um, the musical theater anthologies together <laughs> on a daily basis. Um, it's much the best way to get the fish <laughs> watching, you know. <laughs> right, right. <Yes. laughs> and much to the annoyance of my brothers. And, um, and so I also performed in choirs in school, um, chamber groups, and, and we had a pretty strong um, Renaissance music ensemble at our school, which really provided a great musical foundation mm -hmm. for me as I continued on. And so, um, so in high school, I was really drawn to musical theater, and, and I did eventually get into some shows. <laughs> I performed um, in some of the community theater productions and, um, and then went to college for theater. I was going to mm -hmm. be a theater major, and I w had a music minor. And my freshman year in college, I took the music appreciation course as you know one of the requirements for the music minor. And I was in class listening to all of this classical symphonic music and opera. And I just, it just moved me in a way that no other music had ever, uh, had ever touched me. And I just fell in love with it. And so I, the, I can't remember if it was my sophomore year or my freshman year, but I took the opera performance class where we did opera scenes. And I just absolutely loved it. After performing a scene from an opera production, I just, there was no other style of music for me after that. I was, I, that's all I wanted to do. And so I switched, I flip-flopped my majors. I became a music major with a theater minor. And then um, from then on, it was, that's, I pursued the classical side of things. How exciting, how exciting. Um, do you feel like, um, the world of opera gives you a really nice blend of theater and music? Absolutely. Um, there is, uh, you know, there, there are, there's, a, there's an impression of opera that, that it's not acting, that it's mm. not theater. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, because opera is sung, there is a huge importance of having a developed voice and, and having a voice that can handle that um, literature and um, but, but there's also, we're telling stories mm -hmm. when we uh, perform operas. And, um, and so it's really important to be able to communicate and express what's happening in the story. And, and maybe especially because we're, we're often, but not always, we, there are a lot of operas in English, um, but, but often we're singing in other languages, it becomes even more important to really be able to portray and communicate what is happening between the characters and what is happening throughout the scenes so that that story can still come across even though your audience may not understand um, the language that's being sung. That's beautifully said, beautifully said. And I think it's so funny that you know, the language can be a barrier for people, but what you're saying I think is that the barrier that, that language is really the inspiration to tell the story in an mm -hmm. even more understandable way, which I've never really thought about it yeah. that way before. Mm -hmm. It's great. Um, you know, it, it's standard now, and in, in even with really small companies with small budgets, it's, it's pretty standard to have the translation projected mm -hmm. above the stage. If you go to the Met in New York, you even get it on the seat in front of you. It's, it's going by. So it's, <laughs> it's really accessible now to, to understand even more fully what's going on on stage. Um, but there's also a component to opera that I love of not understanding hmm. the language. Because music has a way, I feel, of expressing things that we sometimes can't find the words for. And and when you, when you don't understand every single word that's coming out, it really, as an audience member, I feel like empowers you to draw from the music what you need in the moment. And, and I think that's a, a particularly special thing that opera offers also. That is, I agree. Well, just to talk about um, the student journey for a minute. If you were, so you had a a slightly traditional but a slightly untraditional path to get where you are, right? So if, if a student decides now, like, okay, this is what I want, I know where I'm heading, what do they need to do 
in high school to prepare for what lies ahead. I hate to sound cliche, <laughs> <laughs> but practice, practice, practice. And take piano lessons. Mm. Um, I, I find, what I, have, I did take piano lessons through um, elementary school and through high school. Actually, I, I kept taking them through grad school, though you may not know it from my piano playing. Um, but what I found in college was that often the things that made the singers walk away from the major was not because they couldn't learn the music or not because they didn't have beautiful voices, but because theory is not easy. Mm -hmm. And you have to take all the theory classes. And, and what I observed was that the people who had the easiest time with theory were the people who had a piano background. Mm -hmm. And so it helps enormously with learning your music, understanding the whole framework of the music, not just the melody line. Um, and so if you're going to pursue music, classical or musical theater, it's really, um, it's really beneficial to you and it will make your life easier. It may not seem like it right now, but it will make your life easier in the long run if you really have that sight reading ability and, and that ability to learn your music on your own confidently. Very nicely said, and an excellent plug for the good, the good work <laughs> that is happening in, That's right. in music theory classes all around the world mm -hmm. and at Shamed High. Yes, indeed. We didn't plan that, for the record. <laughs> um, that's, that's really great, um, I think, information for all of us. So for you, right now you are you know, so established in your career and a lady in high demand, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, music, I think, has been important to you and recently, in the midst of the pandemic, you've had quite a journey in this. You've had quite a journey. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, many things um, evolved during the pandemic. I, they did for everyone, really. It was, it was really, it's been amazing to watch um, through Facebook and social media how so many of my friends in the arts have pivoted um, in their performing careers to, um, to really keep the music world alive through online performances um, and, and learning um, how to make media work for online lessons and keeping studio work alive. It's, it's really been exciting to watch. Um, my involvement with that sort of thing has sort of, has, has not been as involved. Um, and partly that was because I have two toddlers at home and who weren't in school because of the pandemic. And so it's difficult to be on my computer nine to five <laughs> <laughs> um, when I've got two toddlers, you know, coming in, giving their input into lessons. Indeed. And, um, you know, it's either that or plant them in front of the television like from nine to five, which I don't feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I sort of took a step back from teaching and also from trying to put together a bunch of, of online performances. Um, I just found that with my level of distraction and, and noise at home, it was better for me to focus um, my energy in a different way. And so that's actually my practice life mm -hmm. became really important to me. And so I've been doing tons of practicing and it's been really exciting. And I remember when the pen, when, you know, when everything first shut down um, and I was having performances canceled and I thought, well, this is really a bummer. Um, and I just started pulling out my favorite music to sing. And I, was, and I was like, wow, I haven't sung this in a long time. And it was really exciting, actually, mm -hmm. to just have the opportunity to sing whatever made me excited in the moment. And it really, um, it really energized my practicing mm -hmm. in a fun way. Um, also during the pandemic, um, I was diagnosed with cancer. And so through the pandemic, I was going through cancer treatment, chemo, radiation, surgery. Um, and so there was, uh, so then that of course impacted my singing and my, um, and my practicing. So that's been a big part of my life over the past year is, is finding my way back into that 
um, into that consistent practice and how to use that practice to um, also help with my health journey. Um, my, my companion practice, I call it, which is my yoga practice, um, also was really helpful with that. Um, I decided to, to do a second yoga teacher training, which gave me a lot of mindfulness and awareness exercises to work on um, that really brought me into a wonderful mind state for also handling pandemic health issues, um, how to handle the loss of, um, of a really fulfilling job and, you know, and, and all of that, so. You're, you just have so many, so many incredible parts of the story to share. You know, I think so many of us have struggled, right? And, I, and not just adults, but mm -hmm. I think we don't always realize how much students have struggled through this journey of their expectations kind of being halted, right? Okay. And, and um, activities at school, mm -hmm. performances, you know, that are so integral to so many kids' success lives, right? And, um, and you know, so many of us are defined by what we participate with, right? We're on the football team, or we're mm -hmm. in the band, or, mm -hmm. and I know certainly here at Chalmette High, I think being a part of our music and our vocal music and music theater program, CHS Voices, is huge. And I know that we've all weathered that journey. Um, it's so encouraging, I think, to hear another person talking about, we can use this time to grow ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think the perspective that there's more to some people's pandemic journey than just that. You know, you have million fold, <laughs> a million more fold of a journey here. And, you know, and what an encouragement to all of us that, you know, a, a critical, crazy diagnosis doesn't have to end in, in chaos mm -hmm. and tragedy. Like, you are a walking miracle, a walking success story, truly. You have emerged from, from all of this. And I think, I think it's important for us to share those kinds of stories, right? We all need to know that in the midst of the various chaoses and tragedies that like, invade our lives, mm -hmm. there are many success stories. It doesn't, it's not just the, the tragic endings that sometimes surface in the news or other places. Um, you know, you are, you are such an encouragement in everything. I hope so. I try yeah. to be. You, you bring great joy. <laughs> Get it? Joy. Um, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I know that, you know, you are, in addition to being a great performer and a great encourager and a yoga master mistress, um, <laughs> you, you're an excellent teacher as well. And we've been so privileged to have you do this week-long residency with us here at Shalmet High. Um, you want to share a little bit with our audience, maybe some things that we can do to get better aligned and get ready for some great performance making? I would love to do that. Um, so it has, let me start by saying it has been a huge honor for me to be here and a huge privilege and an enormous delight to be um, in the vicinity, right down the hall from where Ms. Kassar is teaching and to, uh, and to work with all of you wonderful students and be in the room with the talented Mr. Zenka playing piano. Um, it's just really been a treat. And you all have a wonderful faculty here, a wonderful program. And let me underscore how important it is in a program like this and for these wonderful teachers what a beautiful um, excitement you all bring into the dynamic. Because as a teacher, um, teaching is a two-way street. You can give everything you have to your students, but if they're not giving it back and if they're not practicing it and if they're not, um, if, if they're not bringing their best effort into it, then it doesn't always turn out this beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I've observed over the week is that you all just bring so much to this program and I think it's really wonderful and you all are doing fabulous work. So keep up the good work and thank you for making this such an enjoyable week. <laughs>
I hope I get to come back some more. Through our master class performances yesterday, we worked pretty specifically on some technical things that I think would benefit everyone. Um, they're foundational things that we all work on. In fact, I still work on them when I'm practicing in my living room. And so I wanted to give everyone who didn't sing in the master class an opportunity to um, work on these exercises and to learn them, and then you can incorporate them into your own practice. So we talked about um, coming into alignment. And one of the things that you learn as an instrumentalist, do any of you play instruments other than singing? Piano or other instruments, kind of a little bit? <laughs> All right. Well, from, from a limited involvement in, an, uh, in another instrument, you know that you have to put the instrument together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You have to put it together properly or it won't sound right and you have to learn some things about how to hold your own body whether you um, certain ways to stand or certain ways to sit while you're holding your instrument ways to hold your fingers while you're playing your instrument and the the way that you um, hold your body can affect how your instrument sounds and as singers we sometimes forget that our instrument being inside of us we really are our instrument. And so when we work on some physical alignment, we can um, better tune our own instrument. We can produce the best sound that our instrument is capable of when we bring our attention to some physical things. So what I'd like to do is do a little moving. In fact, for the first one, you can stay in your seats. If you bring, I'm going to sit in this chair so you can see what I'm doing. And if you bring your hands to your knees and sit up nice and tall, look how automatically you did that. Sit up nice and tall and just notice how things feel. Notice if you are breathing fast. Notice if your shoulders are tense. And maybe if your shoulders are tense, roll them down and back. Notice if you're slouching. And if you're slouching, which by the way, none of you are, you're all sitting up so nice and tall, but be aware of what that feels like. So as we're here, we're gonna take some low breaths. We're just gonna relax the abdomen and let the breath flow in and take a couple of relaxed breaths. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left arm and we're gonna reach up and over and feel a nice long stretch through the left side of your body and then release that hand back down to your knee we're going to inhale and reach the other arm up and over and exhale let it go back down inhale the left arm high and exhale down inhale the right arm high and exhale down one more time on each side inhaling and exhaling the last side inhaling and exhaling and then again maybe shake the shoulders out a little bit and notice how things feel maybe you feel a little bit more room in your rib cage for all of the breath that you want to be inhaling for your singing maybe you feel a little more energized so now let's stand up and we'll do a little uh, we'll do a little moving so what we're going to do is we're going to inhale and sweep our arms high just watch out you're kind of close to each other if you need to like make some room and step to the side you can do that and then we're going to exhale and just release the arms to the side again good so we're going to inhale and sweep the arms high again. This time we're going to reach through the fingertips. And if it's comfortable, come up onto the toes. Like you're changing a light bulb really high up on the ceiling. And maybe if you're like me, you have to kind of dance and shift between the feet while you do that. And then let your heels come down and let your arms drift down to your sides. So one more time, we're going to do that. If it's comfortable, come up onto the toes, but you don't have to. And then this time, we're going to exhale, let the heels come back down to the ground. We're going to let those arms drift down. And this time, we're just going to let ourselves hang forward a little bit. Maybe relax the neck, shake out your head, shake out your shoulders. 
and then slowly roll up through the spine, letting your head be the last thing to come up. We're going to inhale and sweep those arms high again. You can come up onto your toes if you like. And then we'll exhale, release that down. Let's hinge forward again. Shaking the head, yes and no. Maybe shaking through the shoulders. And then let's roll up slowly again. Letting the head be the last thing to come up. We'll inhale and sweep the arms high. Let's keep the feet on the floor this time. And as we exhale, we're going to slowly lower the arms by our sides, imagining that you are a glass of water with lots of sand stirred up in it. And you're pushing that sand down slowly to the bottom of the glass. And when those hands reach your side, your water is all clear and that sand has settled towards the bottom of the glass. Now take an inhale here and an exhale. And again, just notice how you feel. How do you feel in your shoulders? How do you feel in your spine? How do you feel in the torso and in the abdomen where, where we need to be so active with our breathing for singing? Go ahead and sit down. Does anyone want to tell me how you feel? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get great sleep, so my back hurt the entire day, and that made me feel much better. Awesome, awesome. So we relieved some of that nighttime, like I wake up with a cramp, and, um, and we relieved some of that stiffness that we sometimes wake up. We shook that all out. Awesome. And of course, if you think about when you go to sing um, and you, like, you've got the neck cramp or the backache, um, it doesn't feel good, right? It's hard to really get that deep, full breath and feel like you can really sing into um, your voice when, when you are physically in pain. That's wonderful. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. It felt nice to breathe like that. Like it felt really refreshing because when you're sitting at a desk all day at school, you're kind of cramped up in this tiny little area and you can't really breathe correctly or you can't stretch. So it felt good to like let it all out for a second. Awesome, awesome. That's great. And I will tell you, you know, we started out seated um, just doing a little centering and aligning and that is something that maybe you could um, bring into your other classes if you do, if you are getting that feeling throughout the day of being weighed down, just bringing some movement to your spine and, and, and bringing that full breath into it might help as you're moving through your day. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. I felt more aligned and my shoulders felt like less tense and I was more relaxed. Good, awesome, awesome. Well, these are all excellent things and, and things that we want to be feeling as we, um, as we start our practice and as we start singing. So that can be a really great way to start out your practice session. So why don't we move on to, what we're, to the next topic of our breathing. And we did a little bit of this yesterday also in the master class. Um, why don't, why don't we do this also seated? If you come to the edge of your chair and feel low on your belly, let's put one hand on the chest and let's feel ourselves relax the, the abdominal muscles low in the belly. Just let them relax and kind of fall and, and feel that open space in the belly. And now pull them back into place, like you're pulling your belly button back towards your spine. So this time when you relax your belly, you're going to let the air flow in with an inhale. And this time when we exhale, we're going to exhale like we're fogging up a mirror. This feels familiar from yesterday. So when you exhale like you're fogging up that mirror, did you all feel your hand on your belly drifting back towards your spine? That's how, that's the movement we're going to use to energize our breath during our singing. So let's stand up now. And we talked yesterday about coming into alignment for singing and a body alignment that can 
um, that can enable us to find that low breath um, in the best, most efficient way. So what we talked about was putting one foot in front of the other, creating a nice, stable position, lining our hips up right over our ankles, and feeling that our shoulders are aligned over our hips. We've got that nice long spine that we found through the movement that we were doing before. And I promised yesterday we would talk about this, so this is the time to talk about it. We're gonna bring that hand back to the chest and one on the belly. And so we're gonna feel, um, remember we said even pre-social distancing, we had that tendency to lean back on our back heel. Um, when, we're, when we're just talking to each other in normal everyday conversation. Does anyone feel what happens in your belly when you lean back onto that back heel? What was that? Yeah, that's up. exactly right. Yeah, your abdominal muscles tighten up when you lean back. So if you find yourself trying to get that low breath when you're singing and you're leaning back, all of a sudden, these muscles are holding you up, and it's really hard to get your deep, full breath. So when we shift forward so that our shoulders are stacked right over our hips, all of a sudden, we find that we can find this deep, full relaxation in the abdominal muscles. Do you all feel the difference? Good. So when you're practicing, you can exaggerate that even further. You may not have the room to do this on the step where you are, but you can try it. It doesn't have to be huge and dramatic, unlike many of the things we do in opera. <laughs> um, but you can step that front foot forward a little bit and come into a little mini lunge. So that front knee is bent, and you're just hanging slightly over that front knee. Keep your hips over your ankles so you're not tiring your calves out but feel how much more you can release in your low abdominal muscles. So now we come to our fun um, yawn size, our crazy sounds, and this is gonna be loud. Should I move this lapel mic? Okay, we're good? Okay, so we're all gonna do it together. You experienced this yesterday. We're gonna do three of them. We'll take our deep, full inhale, and we'll do our yawn sigh, noodling around, moving breath through our beautiful, expansive voices. You can either keep the hands here to be aware of your breathing, or if it helps you to really get into it, you can do the movement that you see me doing to help remind yourself to keep the air flowing. So let's take our inhale. Beautiful, again, inhale. And one more. Good. Really beautiful sounds coming from everyone. It's wonderful to hear that wall of sound mm -hmm. washing over us. Um, could you all feel the movement of that low breath moving through your sound, through your entire range? You all can sit down. So one of the things I always tell my students about that yawn sigh, it's silly, right? Feels silly. Um, am I right about that? Um, <laughs> thank you for validating me. Um, when I always tell my students that it is the, ex the vocal exercise that feels the silliest, that we feel the most reluctant to do, but that has the greatest impact on our singing. Um, because it really allows us to feel the movement of breath through our entire range. Those high notes that sometimes we feel like we want to clamp down on. It really allows us to approach them with openness and with breath. And so we really start to feel what it feels like to make those sounds with an open, full sound that's really well supported by the breath. So as funny as it feels to do that, and you'll feel really silly doing these sounds at home when you're practicing. <laughs> um, but, but really incorporate them into your practice because it will revolutionize the way that you breathe when you're singing. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? All right, you all did a fabulous job. So one of the things that happens when we combine these two things, our body alignment, with that movement of breath, um, of course, we are fine tuning our instrument. We're coming into an alignment where we're using our instrument 
in a way that can produce its best possible sound, its most secure sound. When you are reliant on the breath, all of a sudden your voice becomes much more stable and much more predictable. You know that you can rely on it even when um, you're having a bad day, even when you're nervous. Um, your, your vocal technique will carry you through those times. Um, in a non-musical sense, what's really important about what we just did, and this relates to, um, to nervousness and stage fright also, um, but you've calmed down your fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. When we get nervous, we get tense, we get zeroed in on what's happening. Sometimes we get distracted by all the things that are happening. We get distracted by what are the people going to think of me when I sing? What if I make this mistake? What if my voice doesn't do the thing that I want it to do? What if I mess up my words? And so we have all of these messages that are going on and all of these thoughts that are going on in our brain. And that's just the musical thoughts. <laughs> that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't account for like what happened at home before I left the house this morning and what happened in third period. And I have the test coming up uh, at the end of the day. You know, all of these things that are constantly bombarding us when we go to sing. And so we're in that heightened state of alertness and nervousness. And, and that can really get in the way of our performance. And that can really get in the way of being able to get our voice out in the best possible way. And so what we've done by bringing the movement into the body and opening up and relaxing the muscles, calming our minds with that low movement of breath, we've calmed down that fight or flight response and we've brought ourselves into a place where we can actually think about what we need to do in this moment. What do I need to do for this performance? Um, which is really helpful, it's really crucial for music performance, but it's also really beneficial in life because there are so many moments. And, and who knows, when you leave this place, um, even after this amazing foundation and this amazing musical education that you are receiving here, um, you're young. Other gifts and talents might emerge in your life and come to the forefront, and you might go a completely different direction. Um, and the ability to calm down to focus on what's important in this moment is a really important ability to have no matter where you are and no matter what you are pursuing. So that's what I hope um, can carry you through with the practice that you're developing in your singing um, and also in your movement. That was beautifully, beautifully said. So at this point, if you all have any questions for Ms. Mead about any of the stories that she's shared today or about your own musical journey, just raise your hand and Ms. Acosta is going to get a microphone to you. I first wanted to say that this is a really cool change of pace than the first person we had on the show, which was fresh out of Shalmet High and right on her music journey, making music in her bedroom. and. I think that this is a really cool change of pace, but I wanted to ask, uh, how long have you been doing music? Have you ever hit any, you know, points where it's like, do I not want to actually do this? Mm -hmm. Like, do I, should I do something else? Like, that is an amazing question. So I, um, I have been singing professionally for 20 years. Uh, probably more than that. I don't know. Don't make me do the math. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started taking voice lessons when I was 13. Um, and there are definitely, um, no matter what you do, I think there are ups and there are downs. There are times where you think like, did I, did I pick the right path? And did I do the right thing? And do I want to keep doing this? And what I would say is that um, in those in those moments where I thought maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe I'll try a different direction, something about it always brought me back, and um, 
And you know, I don't, uh, maybe I'm a weird musician in the sense that I, I, I don't like to put music on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing and I think it's enriching and it, and, it, and it has been my professional career and it has given me so much fulfillment. Um, but I think the thing that is going to make you feel most fulfilled and most happy in life is when you find the thing that makes you excited and when you can bring your best effort and your best abilities into that thing um, that's when you know that you're in the place where you need to be and that's where you'll feel fulfilled and it doesn't have to stay that way forever mm. you know you it's okay to do that and then to discover that there's something else and you know, it's, life ebbs and flows like that. And, and I think one of the valuable things about what we just did, about finding our alignment, finding some quietness, finding some inward awareness, is that you find an ability to bring yourself to a place where you can evaluate all of that mm -hmm. and where you can decide, what, what do I have to bring to the table and what opportunities are presenting themselves to me and how can those things come together um, to benefit me and everyone around me. Thank you. Thank you. First off, amazing everything that you said. Also, what's one of your favorite like shows or like um, languages to sing in? Um, that's a great question. Uh, interestingly, they're not necessarily the same. <laughs> I think my favorite language to sing in is French. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think it has a lot to do with that that was the first foreign language that I had exposure to. It's the first foreign language that I studied. I had an amazing French teacher when I was in high school. And so when I got to college, I was conversationally pretty competent in French and, and my pronunciation was good. And so when I came into singing, it, that was a natural fit, and I just loved it. I just mm. had a love for it. Um, my favorite role, however, <laughs> that I have ever sung is probably, oh, this is difficult. Um, it's probably, th there are probably two runners up, um, and they're it's in Italian. Um, Nedda in i Pagliacci and Violetta in uh, La Traviata. Mm. Um, and this is gonna sound weird too, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to sound really weird. But, you know, on, when you're on stage, it's really fun to do ultra over-the-top dramatic things. Agreed. Like die. Right. <laughs> um, well, I mean, all, and it takes an act to make it happen. Yes, you know, right, it happen. right. And, and it's, um, so it's, it's really fun to just, like, kind of give yourself over to that in a, um, in a safe environment where, you, where no one is actually hurting you mm -hmm. and, <laughs> you know, and, and so it's fun to, it's really fun and liberating to explore that side of just um, releasing yourself and, and letting yourself inhabit some form of life that is completely different from what you experience every day. Um, hi, my name's Ethan, and this question could be aimed uh, at both of you. Um, you guys are friends. I just wanted to know, how did you guys meet? Was it from a show or just a mutual like friendship, or what was it? Sure. Uh, my and Joy's paths crossed uh, when we were each uh, recruited to sing professionally at Trinity Episcopal Church on Jackson Avenue. And um, we, we share some leadership in the soprano section. And um, it was interesting because Joy doesn't even know this. But when, when we first started singing, um, the, one of the big gigs of the year was a, um, a big Messiah concert at the time. And um, Joy came in and I was just like, oh my goodness, wow, we get to <laughs> sing together now. <laughs> so anyway, it was... And the feeling was mutual. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyway, it was a professional collaboration that began, but has certainly grown into quite a friendship. And I value, I value very much having uh, the opportunity to work professionally and friendly uh, with Joy. So that's how we met, um, with singing there. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Before you knew that you wanted to do choir or theater, how, what, did you do something before that or? Ooh. Well, I was pretty young. 
Um, and you know, before I went to college, I, I mentioned that I, the French teacher who really made an impact and, and studying French. And, and so there was, um, yeah, I, there was a part of me that was sort of leaning towards maybe I should major in French and, um, and study linguistics um, and, and go that route. Um, you trying to think you I don't had a career at the UN. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I, d I thought it would be amazing to be a mm -hmm. translator mm -hmm. for the UN or uh, any one of yes. you know, those exciting places. Um, however, the music pulled me in, and, um, and that's, that's what I ended up going with ultimately. Thank you. Hi, my name is Katie. I wanted to know if you had any advice for kids who struggle with confidence to get out there? Yes, yes. Um, that is, that's a great question, and, um, and it's a really important issue for all of us. I, you know, yesterday during the master class, we were talking about overcoming nervousness, and I mentioned that one of the best ways, it's, it's not an easy thing to do to ourselves, one of the best ways to learn to deal with nervousness and to build confidence is to put yourself out there. And it's difficult. And, and you have a really great setting here. You have a wonderful supportive community. The interactions that I see among you all together, um, you seem really encouraging to each other. And, and so my advice to you right now in this phase of life is take advantage of that because you have, this, you have this really wonderful opportunity. You'll get nervous because that's what happens when we stand up in front of people um, to speak or to sing. This, the butterflies start flitting and, and the fingers start tingling and, um, and it gives you an opportunity to come back into your alignment, come back into focus and think about all of the things that you've practiced in the studio and every time you put yourself in that situation where you are getting up to perform, you can even practice this when you have to give presentations in other classes, bringing yourself into alignment to see if you can calm those nerves down and, and do things the way that you practiced them. And every time you do it, it will get easier. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's one more component, I think, to that also um, that is maybe a little less concrete and tangible. But I think also when you examine what it is the music means to you, what is the music saying and what are you saying with the music? And when you are really sure of the message that you are that you are giving to your listeners and you're really sure about what you're saying um, it's a lot easier to get up and um, and then say it in front of people and I think um, you know we we talk a lot about learning the music learning the notes and I even gave my spiel take your piano lessons <laughs> right and that's all really important but I think it's important also to realize that the, that the most important thing that we're doing is actually not the music. Uh, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> um, Especially here, you're allowed to say that. <laughs> um, what, and and this, is, this is true throughout history. The, the, the people who created this amazing, amazing music that like gripped me when I was a freshman in college, um, Mozart was not just creating beautiful, symmetrically, perfectly formulated music. He was infusing it with messages of um, cultural and social significance. And Verdi, the opera composer that I mentioned, um, whose opera I love to sing, and it's one of the highlights of my performing career, um, he became a political figure, a rallying cry around um, the unification of Italy, um, you know, a classical opera composer. And if we bring it to current days, Lynn manuel Miranda, who we all love, um, right, doesn't just write, like, nice songs, right? <laughs> <laughs> the reason that we love his music is because he's highlighting 
these incredibly important um, social issues that we're all dealing with in our lives. And so when you, when you dig a little bit deeper into the music and into yourself also, because you guys are encountering these topics every day in your lives and you have important opinions about them and you have really valid things to say about them. Um, and, and so what I would say is trust yourself. Trust yourself that you have something to say about whatever it is that drives you and inspires you, and then get up and say it. Oh, my goodness. Or sing it. I love that. Oh, my goodness. Trust that you have something to say and get up and say it. Or sing it. I think that belongs on a t-shirt. <laughs> a t-shirt. You know, I think that that is the best advice anybody could give, right? Why do we do what we do? Mm -hmm. Why do we do it? And it, there's a message and a meaning to communicate. And when we find that, then we have found what we need to, to find the confidence to go forward. That is beautiful. Thank you so much for being here today, Joy. And thank you all for joining us on today's Art Strong series. Join us next time where we will meet another guest artist with a passion for the next generation. Oh!